It doesn't breathe. It doesn't move. It just kills. Don't look away. Oh, no. The mannequin is here. Uh-oh. And if you look away, he'll end your day because it doesn't breathe or move. It kills. So, yeah, Don't Look Away was written and produced by the Michaels, Michael Buffaro and Michael Mitten. And they have worked on other projects in the past. It's also directed by Michael Buffaro. And check out the respective IMDb pages for the full listen of their work. And Michael Mitten also plays Jonah, who is a friend of Frankie, played by Kelly Bastard or Bastard. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce. I can only imagine the amount of jokes that were made at her expense for that last name. But nevertheless, Frankie <coughs> is uh, thrown into a really bad situation after a gang of criminals try to get some cargo out of a out of a trailer and let's just say that doesn't end all that well because this particular cargo yeah it's a mannequin that it, it doesn't do anything unless you look away and then it pretty much just comes after you and when you see it ho oh, ho it will haunt you until your dying days which will be at its hands despite the fact it doesn't move it'll find a way to kill you why is this mannequin doing that who goddamn knows? We find out a little bit more as the film goes on, but we're given pretty much just that much information. And from there, we have Frankie, we have Steve, uh, Colm Hill, who also helped co-produce, and we have uh, Rennie Lay as Lucy. No, not Lucy, the Scarlett Johansson character, but she plays Frankie's friend. And then also there's another friend, Isabel Brittany Pilgrim, and there are other cast members, too. I encourage you guys to check it out. Check out their other work and everything. This obviously was an independent horror movie. And was available on Amazon for a few bucks. So I decided, why not plunk down, give it a shot. The premise intrigued me, and I'm like, okay. A mannequin that kills. I mean, there have been examples of inanimate objects or, you know, things that really seem kind of innocent, kind of innocuous, killing. So, all right, I'm down. And I will say there is talent behind the camera. There was some ingenuity put into the thought process to make this movie happen. I like the synth score. The music was actually one of the highlights. <laughs> the mannequin in particular, kind of goofy, but also kind of creepy. And the fact that it was more of a 70s, 80s throwback Maybe even with a little bit of like 50 sci-fi of like just something where you don't see it for a bit and then when you do, oh shit. The lighting was actually pretty well done as well. There are a couple neat little death scenes. And as the film goes on, we find out a little bit more information about this. But <clears throat> yeah, you can't look away. You don't look away or god damn it, this thing's going to kill you. All right, so that's pretty much your plot right there. Um, I will say a couple knocks on the movie and this mostly comes down to one note characters like the actors do the best they can some of the characters are kind of one note uh, they some of their motivations are a little bit questionable there were a couple moments where this thing just took heaps of inspiration and flesh from a couple horror movies including one that came out in 1980 no tv no beer makes homer something something <coughs> don't mind if i do but Overall, this actually turns out to be one of the better horror offerings of this year. I mean, considering it did have a low budget, sure, some of the special effects. I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking director, the producers, none of that. This obviously was a labor of love and had a good idea behind it that they were able to implement mostly well. But some of the special effects, ooh, 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 a little dicey. <laughs> um, and... It, it, it is what it is. It's a decently effective independent horror movie. That is worth your time. Now, am I saying it's perfect? No, but considering the numerous horror offerings, independent or otherwise, that have come out this year and in the recent uh, years past, this is certainly a couple cuts above the arts. I look forward to seeing what else the Michaels can do because they put some passion behind this. And I do have to say, Kelly Bassett is Frankie. She was a good leading woman. Um, Renee Lai, uh, I... If I mispronounce that, I do apologize. <laughs> she was good as a best friend. Isabel, I thought, had a you know a couple nice little scenes, including, yes, unfortunately, there is a death that involves Isabel. Actually, a pretty good death scene. And considering the camera tricks and the cuts and stuff that they do, they actually come up with some. They actually come up with some good ways to mask the fact that it's just an inanimate object that's supposed to somehow kill, supposed to somehow do these violent, violent things, despite the fact it's not supposed to be able to move or even breathe because it's a goddamn mannequin. So yeah, nevertheless, um, 
That's your lot right there. I am going to get into spoilers. It's on Amazon for a few bucks if you want to check it out. Decent horror offering overall. And I hope the cast and crew go on to do uh, even bigger and better projects. So, three, two, one, spoilers. All right. So, basically, this mannequin that is just called the mannequin <laughs> just hunts and hunts and hunts. And there's also a guy named Victor that was trying to ship this thing away. He was trying to get it away for whatever reason. I want this package recovered. Because these criminals get killed, and Frankie gets introduced by accidentally running over, um, you know, somebody involved in this whole process. <laughs> by after people get killed in a tra in the trailer, the door slams and everything. Then she hits somebody, and the blood was very, very Italian, um, Italian like 1960s horror and everything. Maybe not quite that bright red, but still pretty bright red. And Frankie doesn't say anything for a while. She's in shock, all that. And then for a bit, I was like, are they going to have her go Nicolas Cage and Willy's Wonderland and not really do much talking? Well, she does talk. She lives with her boyfriend, Steve, played by Colm Hill. They are, you know, studying and, you know, trying to work on, you know, getting their degrees. At what college? Who knows? It is very Canadian. I'm not knocking, but it is very Canadian. Um, you hear words like again and about... I mean, I'm not, that's not knocking. It's just like that's like one of the t uh, telltale signs. And I, one thing, and I thought maybe it was my Roku until I listened to it on, maybe it was the copy, I don't know. Did, why did some of the dialogue sound like it was done in post-production? Like some of it sounded good, and then some scenes sounded like it was dubbed in a little bit later. Again, that could just be the independent or, you know, the small budget of it and everything. They had to do some tricks. But it, was, it wasn't necessarily a knock. It was just a little off-putting. Okay, now then, since I am in the spoiler section, basically this just this reminded me of the SCP Containment Breach video game, also the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who. <laughs> when, even though I have not seen a lot of Doctor Who, I know about the Weeping Angels. You don't want to look away from those. But it really reminded me of SCP Containment Breach because you're not supposed to look away from one of those things. Not supposed to blink, or otherwise it gets closer. And there were other, there were other ones in there too. And I don't remember all the stuff because it's been years since I actually played that game. And various people died. I did kind of like the rave disco part where Frankie's friend Molly gets killed. Uh, the mannequin is just doing, uh, d being the disco DJ. I don't know why that was so hilarious to me. All the people were dead on the floor, and the skies are gray, and the skies are gray, and oh my god, we will go to California one day. We'll be California dreaming on such a mannequin day. So, his mannequin is everywhere. It's also nowhere, but it's going to hunt you. It's going to cut you down. And then Steve has a story arc, basically, where he just is going insane because of his thesis. His thesis, as it were. That was easy for me to say. He's drinking in a bar while somebody is uh, jazz singing, Tell Me Where Did You Sleep Last Night. Great rendition of that in the Rhythm Nation. Not the Janet Jackson song. Or the, was it the Rhythm Section? The Rhythm Section. I The one with Blake Lively, I probably screwed that up there. The movie wasn't very memorable. That probably proves right there since I got the title wrong. But anyway... Yeah, they gave Steve the Nick, uh, Jack Nicholson shining thing where he just went totally off his goddamn tits because <clears throat> Frankie is complaining about this mannequin that is hunting their friends and everything, and she's also getting a little closer to Jonah. And it turned out Jonah actually did like her, but, you know, respects the fact that she's with Steve. And now the idea is, is there was this video that was shared of a girl saying, this is how you can stop it, this is how you can stop it. And... Well, the mannequin was in the window, and the mannequin ended up killing. And now that the video is shared, much like the tape in the ring, she is she has basically cursed everybody. And then they're at the house or cabin. It's literally like just a cabin somewhere in the woods without the giant hand jumping up at the end. And Steve gets upset. He's been drinking. And... He leaves, and Frankie checks out his thesis, his thesis, as it were, and it's just mannequin. Instead of all work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. This is where they were taking hunks off The Shining. I'm not knocking. I'm just saying that was, if that was any more on the nose, Scarface would have had his face down on the pile. And Steve says, I'm going to set this mannequin on fire. 
And then Steve would lose his head if it wasn't attached. It's no longer attached. Steve dies. Now they must take turns in shifts watching it. They must do this. <coughs> this is after. This is before Steve loses his head, by the way, but nevertheless. Um, now they're all being picked off. Um, Barry's characters get picked off. Victor shows up. And he has, he's blind, so he can't see anything, but he can hunt by his other senses. And we find that out because it was torturing him for 30 years. He was shipping it away, and then somehow criminals stopped the truck, got it, and now it's free again. How did he trap it before? <coughs> we find out because Frankie's able to do it a little bit later. So, yeah, more people die. One guy dies in a hilarious fashion getting trapped in a uh, basement area with a glass door. I don't really understand that. But it, Lucy ends up getting killed by Victor because Victor must kill everybody that has seen it. Don't spread the curse. He'll put it back in a box somehow and he'll be able to ship it. Things are a little bit off with this. And he decided, ah, that's it, I'm just going to kill everybody. Well, Frankie fights back, and then it turns out Jonah's actually not dead, despite getting stabbed. And he dispatches Victor. I did notice note that it sounded like he was hitting a beanbag chair at some points, but nevertheless. Uh, Jonah then suddenly does die. He actually really legit does die. That's it. Jonah's dead. Nothing more. Jonah can't live anymore. He dies. He dies outside the house. And then suddenly, this mannequin teleports around, by the way, but then it teleports in front of a mirror. And because it sees its own reflection, it's held by sight, I, I guess? And so, um, Frankie is talking to Jonah, seemingly. It is either a dream, a dream sequence, and she's the only one alive, or that was just how the lighting was, whatever it is. I mean, maybe Jonah is still alive somehow. And then the thing's being shipped away in a box, and then these guys conveniently just throw it off the goddamn freight, you know, lift deal, and it breaks open. There were mirrors in the box, that's how it was able to be contained, and then it broke away, and then it, it's back. It's back. The, the mannequin has returned. So we're going to get Don't Look Away 2, Electric Mannequin Boogaloo. B minus, B minus. It, 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 it's not great, but there's potential there. And there, there were good aspects to it. I encourage you guys to check it out. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.